Hello everyone, I am Shekaina Aquino Maranga from BSN 111A. And for today's video, I am going to perform assessing the abdomen return demonstration. Assessment of the abdomen consists of inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. The physical examination of the abdomen is the key step in the evaluation of abdominal complaints such as pain, distension, enlarged organs, or masses. Prior to the conduct of the procedure, first thing to do is to review client's previous medical records if available. Next is to prepare the necessary equipment needed to conserve time and energy. The equipment that I'm going to use includes a tape measure for the measurement of the patient's abdominal girth, a sharp object such as this ruler for the hypersensitivity test, and of course, a stethoscope to listen for patient's bowel sounds. Now perform hand hygiene to protect the patient and myself as well from infection and cross-contamination. Good morning, sir. I am Shikaina Aquino Maranga, your student nurse for today. And may I see your wristband, sir? Please state your complete name. I am Richard Gomez. And your birthday, please? My birthday, thank you to seven. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And how would you like me to call you today? Just call me Richard. Okay, Richard. So today I'll be assessing your abdomen, which means I'll have to expose your abdomen. I'll have to listen for your bowel sounds and also um, feel for your internal organs. Will that be all right? Okay. Okay, so um, is it okay if I close the door so no one from outside will be able to disturb you while we're doing the assessment? That sounds good. Okay, so before we start, I encourage you to void first, so um, it will be much comfortable for you while we're doing the assessment, okay? Okay. Ensure that the patient has emptied his bladder prior to the conduct of the procedure because a full bladder can make the examination uncomfortable and it can reduce the accuracy of the fundal height measurement. Now position the client in a supine position with arms folded over his chest or by just lying at his sides and then place a pillow underneath the patient's knees. This position ensures abdominal muscle relaxation to avoid putting additional pressure on the patient's abdomen. Now cover the upper and lower body parts of the patient leaving only the abdomen exposed from the sephoid process down to just above the symphysis pubis. Do you feel any pain in your abdomen? No. Okay, so I'll begin inspecting your abdomen first. Okay. Begin with the inspection of the abdominal skin characteristics, assess for abdominal skin temperature, Color. Note for any vascularities, uh, striae or stretch marks, and also uh, note for any scars, lesions, or rashes. And if there is any, document for its history and its location by quadrant. Now inspect the umbilical location, color, and contour. The umbilical skin tones is similar to the surrounding skin tones or even pinkish. It, it should be recessed, inverted, or protruding no more than 0.5 cm and it should be round and conical. Now also observe for any presence of masses or bulges uh, suggesting ventral hernia which is any protrusion of the intestine or uh, other tissues through a weakness or gap in the abdominal wall. Now to observe for abdominal contour and symmetry while the patient lies supine on the bed, sit beside the client, 
and look across the abdomen at a level slightly higher than the patient's abdomen. Okay, and then stand at the foot of the bed and observe for abdominal symmetry. So the abdomen is normally flat, rounded, or scaphoid, in, which is seen in uh, thin adults. And it should be uh, evenly rounded and symmetrical. So while doing the inspection, also observe for abdominal respiratory movements, uh, aortic pulsations, and peristalsis. Measure the patient's abdominal girth by placing a measuring tape around the patient's abdomen at the level of the umbilicus. So the abdominal girth should be measured at the same time of the day, ideally in the morning, just after voiding. Proceeding now to auscultation of the patient's bowel sounds. So sir, now I'm going to proceed to a listening over your abdomen. Um, I just want to ask, when did you last uh, eat? Last night. Okay. Recent intake may have increased the peristaltic activity, warm hands, and the diaphragm of the stethoscope to avoid startling the patient of the coldness of the stethoscope. Now auscultate all four abdominal quadrants for at least one minute each, starting from the right lower quadrant and then proceeding in a clockwise pattern. Noting for the intensity, pitch, and frequency of the bowel sounds. Now to listen for the vascular sounds, use the bell of the stethoscope and listen for bruits over the uh, abdominal aorta, renal, iliac, and femoral arteries. Now to listen for peritoneal friction rub, use the diaphragm of the stethoscope to listen for friction rub over the liver and spleen. Proceeding now to the percussion of the patient's abdomen, percuss several areas in each of the four quadrants 
to determine presence of timpani or dullness. Timpani is a high-pitched musical sound that indicates a hollow space filled by air and dullness suggests a fluid or feces. Now, per cause for the vertical liver span at the midclavicular line. So, from the right lower quadrant along the midclavicular line, per cause upwards towards the liver, and note the change from tympani to dullness and mark this point. Now, per cos on the right midclavicular line on the area of lung resonance uh, around uh, the third intercostal space and per cos downwards to the liver and note the change from lung resonance to liver dullness and mark this point. Now for vertical liver span at the mid-sternal line starting just above the umbilicus percus upward toward the liver and note the change from tympani to dullness and mark this point. Now for the upper border, start percussion at the body of the sternum along the third intercostal space and percuss downwards uh, until the tone changes from flat to liver dullness. Now measure the distance between the two points. A normal liver span at the midclavicular line is about 6 to 12 centimeters. And the normal liver span along the mid-sternal line is 4 to 8 centimeters. To assess for liver descent, ask the patient to uh, take a deep breath and hold it while percussing from the right lower quadrant towards the uh, liver. And note the change from tympani to dullness and mark this point. Okay, sir, I need you to take a deep breath. And hold it, please. Okay. Can I exhale now? Measure the distance between the lower border and the uh, right costal margin along the midclavicular line. To assess for the spleen and evaluate for splenomegaly, reposition the patient in a right-sided uh, lying position with left knee flexed and identify the left anterior axillary line. To assess the sides of the spleen, percuss the left anterior chest wall roughly from the border of the cardiac dullness at the sixth rib to the anterior axillary line and down to the coastal margin. 
percuss the lowest interspace in the left anterior axillary line, then ask the client to take a deep breath and percuss again. Sir, can you please take a deep breath? Okay. Perform the liver blunt percussion to assess for liver tenderness. Place the left hand flat against the uh, lower anterior rib cage. And then use the ulnar surface of the left hand to strike the right hand. Okay, sir, do you feel any pain? No. Okay. Perform the kidney punch to assess for kidney tenderness. Reposition the patient in a, a sitting position. And then place the left hand at the costal vertebral angle over the 12th rib. Use the ulnar side of the right fist to strike against the left hand and ask for any pain. Sir, do you feel any pain? No. Okay. No. Okay. Do you feel any pain? No. No. Test for ascites. Test for shifting dullness. While the patient is lying supine on the bed, percuss the flanks of the patient from the bed towards the umbilicus, noting the change from dullness to tympani. And mark this point. Now reposition the patient to a side-lying position and percuss the abdomen from the bed upward and noting for the change from dullness to tympani. Sure, I need you to roll on your side. So for fluid wave test, while the client is lying in a supine position, ask the client to press the edges of his hand firmly down the midline of his abdomen. Sir, I need you to place your hand here and press it down, please. Thank you. And then tap one flank sharply with fingertips to feel for a fluid wave transmitted across the abdomen to the opposite flank. Okay. Perform light palpation to assess for tenderness and presence of mass. With the client lying relaxed in a supine position, begin with a light systematic palpation of all four quadrants or nine regions. Using the finger pads, initially avoiding any areas that the patient had identified as painful. And then observe for reports of pain, tenderness, guarding behavior, and masses. Perform the palpation, which is done to fill for the internal organs and masses. Compress the abdomen to a maximum of 5 to 6 cm using the palmar surface of the hands initially avoiding the painful areas and palpated for muscle resistance or masses. Perform moderate palpation at the umbilical ring noting for any presence of masses, swelling, nodules, granulation to assess for tenderness, and presence of mass.
palpation of the abdominal aorta, use both hands to deeply palpate the epigastrium slightly to the left midline. Now, palpate for the liver to assess for liver contour, surface, presence of nodules, tenderness, and irregularity. Place the left hand under the client's back at the level of the 11th and 12th ribs while the right hand is laid parallel to the right coastal margin with, with fingertips pointing towards client's head. Instruct the client to take a deep breath. Then compress the fingertips upward and inward to the lower border of the liver and assess for contour, surface, presence of nodules, tenderness, and irregularity. Sir, please take a deep breath. Okay. Again, please. Okay. Now perform the hooking technique. Stand at the client's right side facing his feet. Press in and upward the coastal margin with your fingertips and ask the patient to take a deep breath gently and firmly. Pull inward and upward with the fingers. Palpate for the liver edge as it descends to meet the fingers, noting for contour, surface, presence of nodules, tenderness, and irregularity. Sir, can you please take a deep breath? Okay, again please. Okay. Percuss the spleen and assess for splenomegaly. Stand at the patient's right side and reach over the patient's abdomen. Okay, reach over the patient's abdomen with the left hand under the posterior lower ribs and pull up gently. Place the right hand below the left coastal margin pressed in toward the spleen. Ask the client to take a deep breath, then press inward and upward using the right hand as the left hand provided support. Begin, palpa begin palpation below the coastal margin and try to feel the tip or edge of the spleen as it comes down to meet the fingertips. Note for any tenderness and assess the splenic contour. Sir, can you please take a deep breath? Again, please. Okay. Repeat the procedure with the client lying on the right side with legs somewhat flex of the hips and knees as needed. Sir, I need you to uh, turn at your side. Take a deep breath in. Okay, take a deep breath in, please. Okay. Palpate the kidneys to assess for kidney enlargement. Stand at the patient's right side. Place the left hand under the patient's right posterior flank and the right hand at the right coastal margin at the mid-clavicular line. Instruct the client to take a deep breath and compress the fingers during peak inspiration. And then ask him to exhale and hold his breath. Briefly and gradually release the pressure of the right hand to feel the right kidney slipping beneath the fingers. Sir, please take a deep breath and exhale and hold your breath please for a moment. Okay, you can breathe now. Again, please take a deep breath. Exhale and hold, please. Okay. 
Palpate the left kidney with the procedure reverse. State the urinary bladder. Begin palpating at the symphysis pubis and move upward and outward. To estimate the bladder borders. Test for appendicitis or peritoneal irritation. Rebound tenderness or Blomberg sign. Palpate deeply at 90 degrees into the abdomen, halfway between the umbilicus and the anterior iliac crest or the McBurney's point. Then suddenly release the pressure. Listen and watch the client's expression of pain. Ask the client to describe which hurt more, the pressing in or the releasing, and where on the abdomen the pain occurred. Okay, sir, did you feel pain while I was pressing your abdomen? No. Did you feel pain when I released a uh, pressing your abdomen? No. Okay. Pain induced or worsened by withdrawal is rebound tenderness, suggesting peritoneal inflammation. Now for referred rebound tenderness or Robson's sign, palpate deeply in the left lower quadrant and quickly release the pressure. Okay, sir, did you feel pain while I was pressing your uh, abdomen? No. Did you feel pain when I released pressing your abdomen? No. Okay. Pain in the right lower quadrant during pressure in the left lower quadrant is positive of Robson sign suggesting acute appendicitis. Test for psoas sign. Reposition the patient in a right side lying position and then hyperextend the right leg. Okay, sir, tell me if you feel any pain. You feel pain? No. Okay. Pain in the right lower quadrant or the psoas sign is associated with the irritation of the iliopsoas muscle due to appendicitis. Test for obturator sign. Now support the client's uh, knee and ankle and flex the hip and leg and rotate the leg internally and externally. Pain in the right lower quadrant indicates irritation of the obturator muscle due to appendicitis or perforated appendix. Hypersensitivity test. Using a sharp object stroke the patient's abdomen do this several times and note for any complaints of pain. Sir, are you feeling a pain in your abdomen? No. Okay. Pain or an exaggerated sensation felt on the right lower quadrant is a positive skin hypersensitivity test and may indicate appendicitis. Test for Murphy's sign or test for cholecystitis. Press your fingertips under the liver border at the right coastal margin and ask the client to inhale deeply and note for any increase in pain felt. Sir, can you please inhale deeply and tell me if you feel a uh, pain? Okay, do you feel pain? No. Okay. Do you feel pain? No. Okay. A positive Murphy sign is when pain occurs when examiner's hand comes in contact with the gall bladder. Okay, sir, so now that we're done with the assessment of your abdomen, here is the summary of what we have just done. Okay, so upon inspection, your skin is uniform in color, no rashes, no lesions, no scars. And your umbilicus or your navel is midline and inverted, which is pretty normal. Your abdomen is symmetrical, and upon auscultation of your bowel sounds, while I was listening to your uh, abdomen, um, it, abdomen, the sounds are pretty normal, and I hear no bruise or um, venous hum. Okay, so while I was uh, measuring for your liver size, um, your liver span at the 
um, your liver span at the mid clavicular line. Here, I measured it is at 7 centimeters, and while I was measuring for your liver span at the mid sternal line, um, it is measured at 5 centimeters, which falls within the normal range. Okay, so upon percussion and palpation, there were no tenderness, no masses, no bulges, and no swelling. Overall, your abdomen is doing pretty good. Okay? Do you have any questions or clarifications? No. Overall, your abdomen is doing really good. But before I leave, I'd just like to give you some advice on how to keep your abdominal internal organs healthy. Okay? So, um, first is to, as much as possible, avoid from drinking too much alcohol or um, hard liquor because it may cause damage to your liver. And instead of drinking alcohol, might as well increase your fluid intake, such as water, to flush out unwanted residues in your liver, in your blood, or in your intestines. Okay? And um, if you have any urge to pee, then do not hold back or do not delay, because um, holding back your pee might cause the bacteria to... Uh, multiply and can cause serious uh, diseases such as urinary tract infection. Okay? okay? That is all. Do you have any questions or clarifications perhaps? No. Okay. That is all. Thank you very much, sir, for your cooperation. Thank you, sir.